This conference will now be recorded. Good morning, everyone. Thank you once again for coming microbiology class. Today, we're going to learn about skin and soft tissue infection. What actually is skin? Skin is the organ system which with multiple functions, consisting of protection of tissues from external microbial invasion. Okay, so skin is one of the organs which usually has so many functions. Major function of the skin is to protect from external microbial invasion. Our surface is mainly composed of keratinized stratified epithelium. Healthy skin. Healthy intact skin usually acts as a physical barrier to penetration of microorganisms. Yes, when we have a healthy intact skin, usually microorganisms cannot enter into our body easily. Suppose if there is a wound, the superficial layer is disturbed. As a result, bacteria can easily enter and may cause infection. So, that skin usually acts as a physical barrier. They also act as tight junctions between epithelial cells. Majorly, they are stick oily matrix which are produced by sebaceous gland. Normal skin flora prevent colonization of bacteria. How actually does infection take place? How does infection take place? When they receive trauma to the skin, the trauma can be as little as minor or Okay. So, infection takes place when the superficial layer is damaged. So, when minor trauma which destroys the integrity and allows microorganisms to access, then infection occurs. Surface is penetrated by ducts of pilosebaceous glands, sweat glands, and hair follicles provide route of entry for microbes, especially if the ducts are mainly destroyed. Mode of infection. How does infection take place? Speculating microbe means the microbe can directly cause an infection. Or circulating toxin means what? The bacteria has to enter into your body, the bacteria has to produce a toxin, and then only infection can take place. And direct inoculum of microbe into epithelium. So these are the modes of infection of skin and soft tissues. Pathogenesis of skin and soft tissue infection. To cause an infection, organisms must penetrate the microbial skin barrier. Okay, so in order for the microorganism to cause an infection, it has to cross the barrier. Our skin usually acts as a protecting layer. As long as we are healthy and as long as our skin is intact and healthy, the microorganisms cannot enter. But if there is any damage, then the microorganism can cross the barrier and cause infection. Okay? It may be also due to trauma. Symptoms of skin infections. Common symptoms are pain, warmth, skin discolorization, swelling, and the presence of vesicles or lesions. These are the common symptoms of skin infections. Uh, 
other skin infections symptoms are a red streak swollen lymph nodes fever or chills fat aching irritability loss of appetite nausea and vomiting so these are also the symptoms of categories of skin infections infections caused by skin can be localized to spreading okay the infection may take place at the particular site or it can spread they may be complicated or uncomplicated uncomplicated means infection of the superficial layer only if infection takes place on the then they may be uncomplicated. If it involves into the deeper part of the skin, then they can be complicated. Skin and soft tissue infections. What are these skin and soft tissue infections? Skin and soft tissue infections can be caused by either direct penetration of a pathogen or by hematogenous spread of the pathogen from the initial site. Skin and soft tissue infections can be classified on the basis of the anatomy level at which the infection takes place. That is, whether the infection takes place superficially or it takes place. Okay, so definition, what are skin and soft tissue infections? These are infections which are caused by either direct penetration of the pathogen or by hematogenous spread of the pathogen from the initial cell. It's what the pathogen may enter into your body, then they enter into the bloodstream. From the bloodstream, they can be distributed to various parts to cause infection. Next one, they can be classified either as superficial or deep, depending upon the site of the skin that is involved. This is skin and various infections on the dermatome of skin where it takes place. Can you see this? So what's here? Okay, first one is top layer is epidermis. What are the infections taking place? Recipulas, petico, folliculitis. Next layer, dermis. The dermis, ectema, parenchyles, carbuncles. Next, cellulitis. Subcutaneous layer, necrotizing fatalitis. Deep fascia and muscular layer, myonecrosis. Next, infections of skin and soft tissue. Infection of skin and soft tissue can take place in any way. The infection may be on the skin or in the subcutaneous tissues or in the muscles. Some important skin and soft tissue infections. First one, RSCPLAS. It is a superficial form of cellulitis that classically occurs on the cheek. It is almost always caused by group A streptococcus. The infection is primarily seen in children and in elderly. So what is this? Erysipelas is a superficial form of cellulitis which mainly occurs on the cheeks on this part of the cheeks, okay? And the cheeks will become red and swollen. This erysipelas is majorly caused by a streptococcus. Erysipelas is a bright red to violaceous 
praise vision that is sharply decalmated and expands rapidly in centrifugal fashion. So what cheeks? Okay, wherever this skin is affected, it will become red, red in color. And also the visions usually expand in circulatory fashion. Visitor circle bay may occur. And erysipelas is accompanied by fever, pain, malice. Chills are generally present, but bacteremia is uncommon or even absent. Erysipelas. It is a streptococcal infection of the dermis. Well demarcated, painful, and erythematous. Indurated plates and blisters. Often they may be fever witches. The rash is present on the face and neck. Erysipelas is common in young and old people. It can often lead to lymphoid retinitis. Treatment of erysipelas is mainly by IV injection of erysipelas. See this diagram? Can you know the picture? Reddish skin. Erysipelas. Next, in Petico, it is a contagious superficial infection of skin. Keep in brain, Petico is contagious, so it can spread from one person to another, but erysipelas is not contagious, mainly caused by staphylococci or beta hemolytic staphylococci. This infection is common in children. Usually involves the face, skin of face, often around the mouth and nose. So skin of face, okay, the nose, this nose area and the mouth area is part of the area infection express. Threats by direct contact. Minor abrasions and other skin lesions are predisposing factors. Prevention. This is if it's a contagious infection, prevention is by good personal hygiene, personally handing and washing food. Impetical is further divided into two main types. One, bulbous and non-bulbous. Non-bulbous is caused by structure focus spirology. Honey, crust, lime, lesions. Second one is bulbous, is caused by cephalococcus aureus, rupture of the brain, wash, like crust. Okay, so differentiate between bulbous and non bulbous type. Non bulbous vertigo is caused by non bulbous streptococcus, bulbous. Non bulbous, the lesions are honey crust. Whereas bulbous, they are varnished. So, what is this? What type of lesions? Non bulbous or bulbous? This is bulbous caused by septile bulbous obvious. Treatment. How will you treat it? Vertical? Usually self-limiting. I want precipitating factors such as exfoliation. So this is a contagious disease. So what when they are usually emissions, okay? Do not scratch yourself. If you scratch yourself, automatically it will spread to other area. So it is the major preventive factor. Localization can be prevented by treating with 
Don't be scared, choose it as a mild and low class infections by topical antibiotics. Extensive diseases are treated with oral processing and erythromycin. Next. Folliculitis. Differentiate between erysipelas and ventricular folliculitis. The lesions. How are they? The distribution, pattern, texture, is the all of it. Now, folliculitis is a superficial infection of the hair follicles and itchy, tender papules and pustules, mainly caused by staphylococcus aureus. This folliculitis is majorly caused by staphylococcus aureus. And it is a superficial infection of a fungus. Often the capsules and pustules are itchy and tender. So see, how are these pustules? Can you see the picture? Can you see the pustules? It is filled with whitish pus. Can you see that? So, small pustules often pierced by the hair. Okay, mainly present on the legs and face. Mainly common in humid climates and when offensive clothes are worn. Extensive itching, polyglitis is usually seen in HIV infected patients. Okay, now this polyglitis you can usually see on a heavy parts of the body. And they are usually which majorly caused by staphylococcus aureus. How will you treat folliculitis? Local antiseptics. Local antiseptics to treat itching as well as bacterial infection. Topical sodium fusidate. Mucirosin. Mucirosin containing ointment. And oral antibiotics such as erythromycin. If chronic, detect and treat caffeine state. Next one, voids. So, what are voids? Voids mainly cause for staphylococcus. It is the staphylococcal infection of a deeper part of the hair follicle. Now, Staphylococcal infection of hair follicle superficial layer is called as folliculitis, whereas if it involves the deeper layer, it is called as balls of pharyngus. Most common on the face, neck, armpit, buttock, and thighs. On central face, danger of Cavernous sinus thrombosis. Balls are usually tender, flat, cone shaped, which usually swell and heal with scarring. They may recur again in a year. Treatment antibiotics. If ball is large, then you have to do incision in order to remove the. Next one, carbuncle. It is a deep staphylococcal infection of several adjacent hair follicles. So, carbuncle is also a staphylococcal infection, and it is the deep infection of the hair follicles. Here, it is also characterized by the presence of balls, but there will be cluster of balls, not a single, but cluster they will be. So, Cluster of balls that form a connected area of infection, mainly present on the neck, back, and thighs. Carbon scripts are commonly observed in diabetic and other debilitated persons. Treatment antibiotics or surgical invasion. Ectema. Can you see this? 
So this is caused by both streptococcus as well as streptococcus. Ulcers usually forms under a crusted surface of infection and heals with scars. So what is this? Patients takes place. Then they become ulcerated and later they form a crust. They heal away, but scar is left permanently. Predisposing factors of disinfection are poor hygiene and malnutrition. Minor injuries and also other skin conditions may deter. So, this eczema is majorly caused by poor personal hygiene as well as those people who are malnourished. So, what is the treatment? Improved hygiene and nutrition. Antibiotics can also be. Next, cellulitis. It is an infection of the normal flora. It may be caused by cephalococcus aureus or beta hemolytic streptococcus. So, cellulitis is normal infection of normal skin flora, which is caused by both cephalococcus and streptococcus. Cephalococci, it is caused by streptococcus obvious. Streptococci, it is caused by beta hemolytic strep. Mainly involves the deep skin and subcutaneous layer. The cellulitis may be due to trauma of the skin or other acceleration. Organisms enter to breach the skin and they may invade the bloodstream to cause bacteremia or sepsis. Cellulitis often affects the part of the lower leg, hand, nose, and periorbital areas. Clinical features of cellulitis. Can you see this picture? Look at the hand properly. Symptoms, acute localized pain. So wherever infection is there, that part, pain is there. Edema, lymphatitis and lymphadenitis. Hot, painful, erythema streaking. Progressing proximally from the affected area, tracking along the back. This may or may not be present. It is also characterized by fever and illness. So these are pictures of cellulitis. Note the eyes, nose, face, cheeks, how they are. Predisposing factor. What are the predisposing factors of cellulitis? Diabetes. Alcoholism, malignancy, drug abuse, venous stasis, and lymphedema. All of these cause and predisposing Cellulitis. Do you see the pictures? First one and second one. See how are they? They are trusted, right? They are erymatous, right? And they are erythematous, right? Investigation. Cellulitis, I can investigate. First of all, we have to collect the sample, right? So, first of all, this collect the sample from the correct side to perform drug staying as well as blood cultures. Why blood cultures? The bacteria enter into the bloodstream to cause bacteremia or subterranea. So, the cultures also have to be considered. Next one. Serology consists of about anti lysine O, ASO test, and anti DNA test. Because it is caused by streptococcus as well as cephalococcus. Management. 
how we can manage elevating the limb which is creating underlying cause and by using different antibodies. Next, skin abscess. What do you mean by skin abscess? Which part of the bone is involved? Subcutaneous layer. So, skin abscess is a subcutaneous infection which is characterized by the formation of pus, localized pus, which is surrounded by granular mantis tissue. Mainly, it is as a result of some injury or infection of the camatoma. Can you see this? There is an abscess as well as there is a relitis also. Okay, so what are the clinical features of this? Cellulitis is there. Next, skin is swollen. Next, soft, tender. Next, how is it? Yes, in the middle there is cellulitis. It has swollen enematis, and then the middle, because it is so festive, it will be soft and feels like fluid underneath. And also it will be painful and tender. So these are the common symptoms. This is mainly caused by staphylococcus aureus. Predisposing factor is treatment, incision, and drainage. We have to remove your pus. So the best method of treatment is incision and drainage. Next. Necrotizing facets. It is a clinical emergency polymicrobial infection of the fascia, which is usually caused by so many types of bacteria. First one, which is caused by mainly interior bacteria, say, and Clostridium, and type two, which is caused by structure of Say, the interior bacteria is a family, what are they? Scritia para, Tropius, Scripsira, all of these can cause necrotizing facetis. Other than this, Pseudomonas can also cause necrotizing facetis. We proceed rapidly to underlying this. Diagnosis is often delayed because it usually looks the same as that of other infections. It rapidly progresses to shift its shock and a mortality rate. See the diagram properly. What is this? Fascia and muscular tissue changing skin color represents spread that is not visible on the surface. Clinical features of necrotizing fat. So, whichever part of the body it is affected, that part will be severely painful. So severe pain at the site of infection. The tissue will undergo necrosis. So the tissue will be damaged due to lack of oxygen, due to the growth of bacteria and the production of drugs. Spreading erythema and pain. Soft tissue cryptus. Fever and tachycardia. Diagnosis based on the signs and symptoms, and also by image, that is air in the tissues. Clinical findings of necrotizing facetis. Early findings and late findings. Early findings. During the early stages, the person may suffer with pain, cellulitis, 
Pyrex CF fever, tachycardia, swelling, and skin anesthesia. During the later stages, pain may become intense. The color of the skin may change, either greenish or black. Sisters may be present. Pipides means glass from the spoiled tissue. Discharge of fish winter food, severe sepsis, and multi organ failure. Treatment of necrotizing cellulitis. Necrotizing cellulitis has to be treated very immediately and promptly. Antibiotics. For type 1, broad spectrum antibiotic combination can be given, such as amoxicillin. Lupinine and Ravofloxacin, whereas for type 2, benzalpinsulin and clindamycin are the choice of treatment. Urgent surgical exploration. Under which conditions urgent surgery has to be performed in the case of necrotizing parasitis? When an extensive layer is infected, which can lead to little amputation. Sometimes, if the part has become gangrenous, then we need to remove the Next one. Stephylococcus calvex skin syndrome. Have you learned it? Yes, you have learned this in stephylococcus. Okay. It is usually caused by exfoliated toxin or epidermal lactic toxin, characterized by erythema. Outer layer of the epidermis peels off and there is sister formation. Severe form of cephalococcal scalic skin syndrome is called as Ritter's disease of newborn. Cephalococcal scalar skin syndrome mainly affects infants, immunocompromised and renal dysfunction. Mortality rate is high. Next, Halter adenitis suppurators. What is this? This is the infection of sweat glands, mainly sweat glands. Common in their axillary and growing and feeling. Here it is usually characterized by tender swellings, which may become large and filled with pus. It is usually very severe in patients about obesity. Treatment since it is worse than obesity, it is worse weight loss. This the first. Insert treatment. Other are oral retinoids and zinc gluconate. Erythrasmus. It is the chronic infection of corneal bacterium. So, this is the skin infection which is caused by corneal bacterium. Okay. The skin usually becomes wrinkled, scaly pink. With Macerated white areas. Infected parts of the body are armpit, groin, or between toe webs. When you observe the skin under good light examination, the skin usually appears for a pink color. This erythrous mass is present in hepatitis, overseas, and patients living in warm climate. Treatment or topical fusidic acid and myconazole. Myconazole for treating fungal infections. Next one. Gangrene. What is this gangrene? Do you know? Which bacteria causes gangrene? Yes, Clostridium. Clinical situation where extensive necrosis is takes place, which is complicated by bacterial infection. 
So there is necrosis of the underlying tissue. The tissue will become discolorized and it is usually filled with pus. Okay. And the gangrene is further divided into dry gangrene, wet gangrene, and gases. Treatment person pattern, major reason when there is a severe infection of the bone or muscles. When the part of the body is severely damaged, the muscles are also severely damaged, then it can lead to gangrene. Eschema due to arteriosclerosis and diabetes. Now there are three types of gangrene. What are they? Dry, wet, and gas. What is dry? It is uh, as the result of coagulated necrosis. That part usually becomes black and dry. Secondary bacterial infections are common. For example, gangrene of extremities in thromboembolic occlusion of vessels. Wet gangrene. It is a tissue necrosis. Swollen, reddish, foul smelling tissue. Extensive liquefaction of the dead tissue of this. Example diabetic gangrene of foot and bone. When you see this, this is gangrene of foot, down one, gangrene of fingers. Gas gangrene. Gas gangrene is also known as clostridial myonecrosis. It is caused by clostridium perfringens. There is extensive tissue destruction. Gas production by fermentative action of bacteria. Swollen, reddish, black, foul smelling tissues with tripitus. Treatment. Surgery. Surgery is the major treatment. Amputation. Sometimes you have to cut off. Antibiotics alone are not effective. Now, overall etiology. Once again, we'll come back to the overall etiology. Okay. Etiological agents causing infections of epidermis and dermis. Virus, fungi, Parasites and bacteria, all of these can cause infections of epidermis and dermis. Viruses such as herpes zoster virus, varicella zoster virus, herpes simplex virus, fungi, dermatophytes, sporotrix chen key, parasites, cutanean, larva, migraines, and bacteria. Bacteria such as Streptococcus pyogene, Staphylococcus aureus, and Cornibacterium. Streptococcus pyogenes is responsible for causing erysipelas in petico and cellulitis. Staphylococcus aureus, also cellulitis, petico, parenchyma, and polis. Polis for this. Cephalo, vocal, scalded, skin syndrome, which is caused by exfoliating toxin produced by cephalococcus. Next, cornibacterium myonutisism. It causes retras. Next, etiology of infections of subcutaneous tissues. Come back such as mycetoma, candida species. Parasites, such as Trichinella, Tinea, Bucararia bancrofti, and Dracontus myonesis. Bacteria, such as Clostridium, Bacillus, Staphylococcus aureus, and Staphylococcus. Next one. Etiology of infections of the wound. Only bacteria and fungi. 
bacteria such as Streptococcus pyogenes, Staphylococcus aureus, Fargus nitri, Staphylococcus proteus nitri, and Pseudomonas. So Pseudomonas. What kind of fat is formed by Pseudomonas in blue detection? Bluish green fat. Next, fungi, such as Candida species. Next one, etiology of infections of burn wounds. Differentiate between common wounds and wounds which are caused to birds. Birds, bacteria, progress linked to Staphylococci, Enterobacteria, such as Escherichia coli, Rhipsina, Proteus, and Pseudomonas. Fungi, such as Aspergillus thesis and Candida species. Next, lab diagnosis of skin and soft tissue infections. Specimen collection. The first thing in lab diagnosis is to collect proper specimens from proper site. First one is fat. You can collect fat by infection drainage, needle aspiration, or by using a sterile swab. Fluid, needle aspiration, or by using sterile swab. Dermate of fight infection. Scrapping from the active border of conditions. Eris phylloid, skin biopsy, subcutaneous infection, sample collected from base of patient, surgical biopsy or body Diagnosis. This is of the about perform microscopy as well as inoculate onto culture media. Now first one. Microscopy. Perform gram staining for bacteria and see whether they are gram positive or gram negative. Again, if gram positive bacteria means, see if they are present in clusters or chains. Clusters means Staphylococcus aureus. Chains means Streptococcus. Again, if clusters are same, again perform quadrilateral tests. To differentiate between Staphylococcus aureus and Coagulus negative Staphylococcus. Gram negative means differentiate if they are from Enterobacteria C or from other factor. Perform oxidase test. If it is oxidase negative, place it under Enterobacteria C. If oxidase positive, place it under Pseudomonas. Next one, seal Nielsen chain. To see if they are acid from bacteria or non acid from bacteria. If it is a fungal infection, perform pH mode. Next, for virus, perform Sang smear for herpes virus and then cell ancestral virus. Culture. So, first one is microscopy over, and next one is cut. Bacterial culture and fungal culture. For virus, no culture. Or for antigen antibody testing. Fungi. The culture media used for fungi is saccharose, dextrose, agar. Whereas for bacteria, further divided into aerobic culture media and anaerobic culture media. Area of culture media such as Nikonki agar, red agar, chocolate agar, and other medium are employed. An area of media, teoglycolate or acid. If there is any growth on the culture media, we have to put biochemical reaction to identify the specific organism. And also, we have to perform antibiotic test. Okay, so these are the laboratory diagnosis of skin and soft tissue infection. So what is this? First of all, you have to collect the specimen, right? After collecting the specimen, do microscopy, 
for preliminary diagnosis, recently diagnosis, and also inoculate into culture media. If there is any growth on the culture media, perform biochemical reaction to identify that specific and also for antibiotic sensitivity for us to know which antibiotic is. Okay, so that's all for today's class. Thank you.